It's an exciting time to be at Freewheel because we are plugged into so many different aspects of the business. We've combined several companies over the last several years under Comcast's Advanced Advertising Division. And we partner with publishers and helping deliver ads to any screen. Um, we work with MVPDs as well, uh, as well as servicing agencies through our um, Freewheel Advertiser Division. And then my division is Freewheel Media, which helps align demand and supply and push forward uh, the effectiveness of advertising in video across any screen. So a lot of things you're talking about are really about the fluidity of the marketplace or taking friction out of the marketplace between supply and demand across a range of different channels. What do you think are some of the obstacles we've overcome so far as an industry and free will specifically? And what do you think are the next ones we're likely to tackle? So I think we've, we've done a pretty good job of creating some supply sources that are broad enough, like at Freewheel, where we work with local MVPDs to aggregate up all their supply and really package audience uh, against that supply. So not really selling shows or programs, but really trying to find the consumers that the marketers are looking to reach and gain attention from. On the digital side, I think we've grown a tremendous amount in creating availability of the content. The programmers have done a masterful job, almost getting ahead of the advertising ecosystem to make it available to all of us, wherever we want, however we want it, switching screens, et cetera, uh, picking up where we left off. And Freewheel has been the backbone of delivering the ads in those environments. And because of the nuances in digital inventory and how it's not set at a specific, specific schedule, it's when we all create it as consumers, we need to create a media solution that unlocks the value of those audiences and again try to match advertisers with those audiences across any screen. So I think we've shown a lot of growth there um, that scale actually is available in these premium audience in these premium inventory sources by applying audience. So when we move to a data-driven audience buying mindset what are some of the things folks need to keep in mind and how important will it be for the industry to coalesce around specific segment definitions so that a marketer who's actually buying across multiple sources of supply can be in a position to bring that same definition that they know is strategically valuable to themselves across multiple sellers? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic that honestly started in digital with all the behavioral targeting segments and whether someone was a, a super chef or a world traveler, you know, had different parameters around them, one time per month, 12 times per month. And it's really hard to create a currency and trade on that data when there are those different definitions. So I'm optimistic that we are uh, aggregating the right people and the right sources and the right companies to try to resolve a lot of those issues. And then the question is, how do we apply that data to the inventory? And, for, and free will really is at the forefront, whether it's through our own marketplace initiatives, partnering with OpenAP and a lot of the broadcasters, really understanding the dynamics of creating a market so that you can actually transact um, and there is a common currency so that you can create the right value. And we talk a lot about sort of the trading of inventory and creating as little friction as possible in those transactions allowing the buyers and sellers to really do what they need to do to match up that supply and demand. So audience definition sort of sits at the front end of the process and then on the back end of the process we talk a lot about attribution. We've mm -hmm. got some short-term measures like spike analysis, there are other things that look at more long-term brand performance oriented metrics or overall audience response. When you think about that full spectrum of definitions how do you think about the short versus the long term and the right way to be thinking about attribution in this particular moment? It's, it's an interesting challenge, right? Everyone always wants to look at sales and, and if you're a publicly traded company, you're looking at sales quarterly and some companies weekly and daily. Uh, from a, a business perspective, the media and advertising industry has really been about matching up audience with an advertiser's message. And I still think, you know, foundationally, the attribution plays a role in it but our job in the ecosystem is to make it as easy as possible to find those audiences, yes, using data, um, and then deliver that message, whatever screen the consumer is watching on, and then at the same time partner with other companies that are really good at, at highlighting those metrics. I think if we do our job of matching up those audiences, the outcomes will be what the outcomes need to be based on that creative and that messaging and that offer and the value prop that the marketer is presenting to all of us as consumers. 
And we're really excited about being in the middle of that and helping that transaction happen as easily as possible, as much scale as a marketer can possibly uh, accumulate. So last question, you know, do you think as we start to bring more data into the equation and append it to the inventory that's available to us, do you, do you think this is an important time for us to be agnostic in our approaches to inventory and bring more of that objectivity into the equation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So the value of one piece of inventory for one uh, advertiser is totally different for another. Timing is also critical, um, understanding what that impact is and the relationship of time to those marketing messages. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, um, we're not at a place where I think we have enough of the right information. We have a lot of information that can help us make those decisions, but I don't think there's there's the the sort of edict on what's valuable, what's not valuable holistically yet. Because again, there's, there's shows that I think someone would consider, uh, we all talk about premium versus not premium, right? My premium is not someone else's premium, you know, and, and, and that's an important distinction. And marketers recognize that. That's why there's so much choice out there in the, in the economy and, and the world to try to service all of our demand. And I think, you know, in the advertising system, we kind of lose sight of that a little bit, that there are plenty of opportunities to message to consumers in the right content for your messaging.